Hello everyone, Ember Power here, and welcome back to a new video. In this one I'm going to be going over for some new decks for the Wings of Unity from Paldea Evolved. So essentially this deck is based around Murkrow, which has the very powerful attack Wings of Unity that does 20 damage to each Pokemon in your discard pile that have some Wings of Unity attack. Now this attack has been seen before in the TCG in the forms of stuff like Night March as well as Mad Party, but what makes Murkrow so unique is the fact that it's for a single basic energy. Now in the past, Mad Party and Night March have used two colorless energy, which is kind of annoying. And in comparison to something like Murkrow that only uses one basic energy, it's definitely a massive upgrade. And because it's a dark type Pokemon, it means we can, you know, hit weakness on stuff like God of War and Mew, yeah, Mew, EX. I know he said there, Mew VMAX, I should say. Wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a Mew EX at some point, but you know, Mew VMAX. So the other bird we have is Waterall, and there's also a Famigo. So we will cap at a fairly low damage output, but we do have Ditto from Pokemon Go, just to let you know. So Ditto can essentially copy this Wings of Unity attack, so effectively we have four birds in the deck. So Waterall has the exact same attack, this time for two colors though, but it will however be hitting weakness on Lightning Weak Pokemon. So, you know, stuff like Flying Pikachu, for example, or Lugia. Also have the new Iono supporter card that says each player shoves a hand, puts on the bottom of their deck. If either player does this, then each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. And typically you'll see with these single prize decks is that your opponent's obviously going to be taking KOs before you often will, because you're setting up for like larger KOs in the late game. So being able to Iono up to that point means you can just have a lot of disruption in the early game and hopefully disrupt the opponent so you can get set up properly. So into this first list, we've got the four Flamigo, the four Murkrow, four Waterall, two Ditto, one Manaphy, and then the three, three, one line of Gardevoir. So, well, Curlia and then Gallade. So Gallade will allow you to find a supporter card, and that's just going to help late game, you know, find Ono's boss's orders if we need to, potentially, because obviously we're not really doing one at KO's early game, so... Being able to hit something, maybe our opponent retreats or evolves, we can target it down late game. So it's pretty cool and worth bearing in mind. We also have four Ultra Ball, four Net Level Ball, four Nest Ball, so plenty of Pokemon Search. Split a Pokemon Recovery, so one Rescue Carrier, two Super Rods, which is decent because Super Rod obviously can recover basic energy that we need for Ditto as well as Murkrow. In the deck, we also have, I think that's two R's in town in the bottom left corner. That's the, the new stadium, or bottom right corner, I should say. That's a new stadium that says once in your turn you can search your deck for basic Pokemon without a Robux and just put it straight onto the bench. So that's a pretty decent stadium card to have. Definitely, like, we don't need a stadium in this deck, strictly speaking, because we don't play any Radiance, so we don't need to turn off Robux Pokemon, really. But having a stadium like that is pretty useful, and it'll definitely help us get set up. So, yeah, fairly straightforward list. Not very many switching outs, but to be fair, our retreat cost is very limited across, you know, all our Pokemon. It is fairly low. Next up is a pretty similar list, this time without the Gallade, and actually playing the new Squawkabilly EX. So Squawkabilly, for those of you who don't know, says on the first turn of the game, and only on the first turn of the game, what you can do is discard your hand and draw six cards. Now Squawkabilly doesn't actually specify when you play it from your hand onto the bench, I should say. So what you can do is actually Great Ball or Nest Ball. This, de this deck for some reason doesn't play Nest Ball, but it plays Great Ball instead, which is a bit weird. But like, if you if you didn't want to like swap out Great Balls and S Balls, I probably would to be honest. But you could S Ball for a Squawkabilly, and then use the ability, and then you know, you don't like you don't have to Ultra Ball for Squawkabilly. That's what like, I'm trying to say. So I think it's a really solid choice in here. It is a bit of a two prize liability, unfortunately. But either way, Pokemon count remains the same. You do need Manaphy still for stuff like Urshifu, and yeah, pretty straightforward list. Besides that. This last list we're going to take a quick look at is a little bit more spicy than the previous lists. I don't think it's nearly as consistent, but it is this kind of like luminous energy toolbox kind of thing going on. We do have a one slowpoke, one slowbro. So we can use slowbro's walk off homer, or I think it's like the last resort tack to essentially win us the game. If our opponent is like one prize card ahead in the prize race towards the late game, we can win the game with slowbro, which is cool. It is also playing a new slowpoke that says flip a coin if heads, you get to search your deck for any card. If Tail is Surgery Deck for a card and discard it, which is really decent. Usually that'd be pretty detrimental in most decks. But honestly, being able to flip a Tails and Surgery Deck for a bird and discard it is pretty solid. So, you know, kind of like it in that regard. The deck's also playing Radiant Charizard because we are playing three Luminous Energy. So 
having Radiant Charizard is a really solid option, especially towards the late game, because even though your Pokemon are doing one it KOs, you don't always want to rely on Murkrow and Ditto. So, you know, Radiant Charizard, very strong option. But yeah, it's been our power. Thank you for watching, and I hope you till next time.